morning, all of you. Morning. Hope uh, you remember the current affairs, right? The basics I told you, current affairs can be classified into two styles. One is your static part. The other one is events. Mm -hmm. So events are not so important. Events are like one-off events, okay? Whereas uh, you don't have a single source for static part. Within current affairs, we can easily segregate 150 topics and those 150 topics will be repeatedly asked and the question, if a question comes, it will come from those areas. For example, yesterday I have asked you about uh, Kashmir map, right? So if you remember, <coughs> See, everyone have their own map in their mind. Okay. Yes or no? When I say Kashmir map, you must have thought some something you've seen in Wikipedia or something you have seen somewhere else. But the simple advantage is if you take 15, 20 images and if you make a notes out of it, uh, you can save them in uh, a particular place. So every time when I think of Kashmir, if I see the same map, this particular map, okay, what is the advantage? Stop. Just like Lakshmi can see, when I say polity, when I say fundamental rights, where do you, you where do your mind go? It goes into Lakshmi Khan, your own book, your highlights. You'll remember it a lot of times. But Kashmir, Atlas. You may go to Atlas. Okay, or one time you Geography. see it in vision material or some other material. The other time you see in Hindu paper. The other time you see in some random newspaper article or some clip like this. So 10 times you have seen Kashmir in 10 different images. But if you have one fixed image, okay, the advantage is recollection. So till now you have focused on the macro thought process of prelims, sorry, mains, okay. Kashmir issue, what, what, when, how, what will be the trivialities. Now prelims is all about trivial details. There is no such thing as small detail. Every detail you have to remember. So my suggestion is from now onwards, whatever you do, you consolidate. Consolidation is very, very, very important. National Food Security Act. Don't roam to 10,000 places. Have one source for National Food Security Act, whatever that source is, okay? If you have read a particular institute's monthly magazine, if you have the Xerox, tear it. Tear off those two papers, keep it at one place. Okay, in June, I have read the National Food Security Act, June of monthly current affairs. Tear those two papers, spiral book anyhow, right? Easy to tear, put it in one place. Okay. Then, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana, to tear it, put it under one place. Okay, so what I'm trying to tell you is, have one source, just like Lakshmi Kant, even for current affairs. Randomness is not going to help you because crystal clear clarity is expected from you in static part or current affairs also. Okay, so that should help you. Now, yesterday we have discussed the same parts. I don't want to discuss the same again, but all of you can see the pictorial differentiation, right? Imagining in mind is one thing, seeing it in reality is whole different thing. Siachen <clears throat> Glacier, Ladakh, Jammu, Kashmir. Yes. Uh, where is Kargil? Intersection this? No, sir. Little off. This? Yes, sir. This pair. Yes, sir. Somewhere here. Yes, sir. There... That is Kargil. Mm -hmm. Kargil is also a part of Ladakh, right? Yes. Yes, sir. Kargil is also a part of territory in Ladakh. Le? Right side, right, sir. This area? Yes. No. Little down. down. Like this? <laughs> okay. Like near Ladakh, yes. Okay, near Ladakh is Lay. Sure. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, nice. Right. So, continuation of Gilgit Baltistan. CPEC Economic Corridor. China and Pakistan has recently announced Economic Corridor again. I mean, they are updating the existing CPEC, China Pakistan Economic Corridor. Obviously, you know, it passes through what? China Pakistan economic corridor passes through which Gilgit part of Baltistan? Gilgit Baltistan, not uh, anything else. Like hmm. Obviously, it is passing through Gilgit 
బాల్డెస్ సార్ సో ఇఫ్ చైనా ఇస్ డ్రాయింగ్ ఏ లైన్ త్రూ దిస్ లైక్ గోదర్ పోర్ట్ చాబహార్ పోర్ట్ దలారం జరాంజ్ హైవే ఆల్ దిస్ థింగ్స్ యూ నో చాబహార్ పోర్ట్ యూ నో ఎస్ ఎస్ అన్నో చాబహార్ పోర్ట్ యూ నో స్ట్రైట్ ఆఫ్ ఫోర్ మూస్ నియర్ బై ఓన్లీ గోదర్ వాట్ ఈస్ ద పోర్ట్ ఇన్ పాకిస్తాన్ గోదర్ ఈజ్ ఇన్ పాకిస్తాన్ కరాచి గోదర్ చాబహార్ ఎక్స్టెన్షన్ టు చాబహార్ ఈస్ నెక్స్ట్ ఈస్ స్ట్రైట్ ఆఫ్ ఫోర్మోస్ సో ఇట్స్ వెరీ ఇంపార్టెంట్ చోక్ పాయింట్ ఇట్ ఈస్ వన్ ఆఫ్ ద ఇంపార్టెంట్ చోక్ పాయింట్స్ లైక్ దిస్ యూ హ్ టు రిమెంబర్ సో అగైన్ వాట్ ఐమ్ ట్రైంగ్ టు టెల్ యూ ఇస్ హ్యావ్ వన్ సోర్స్ వన్ వన్ పర్టికులర్ ఇమేజ్ ఇఫ్ యూ ఫైండ్ వన్ పర్టికులర్ మధ్యలీ మ్యాగ్జైన్ హ్యాస్ కవర్డ్ ఆల్ దీస్ థింగ్స్ నైస్లీ జస్ట్ టేక్ దోస్ టూ పేజెస్ అండ్ కీప్ ఇట్ అట్ వన్ ప్లేస్ లైక్ దిస్ ఇఫ్ యూ కెన్ కంపైల్ యూర్ ఓన్ మెటీరియల్ వాట్ విల్ హ్యాపెన్ just like lakshmi khan even in your current affairs you will be master why repeating the same things again and again revising multiple times and it will fetch you marks all the trivial idiotic data is not at all important okay <coughs> so i'll try to see uh <coughs> you have to remember and what is the logic between the triviality also for example operation ahad recently it has been announced uh, it was in the news okay this is related to human trafficking do you think a prelims question will come on this particular topic there are five points right in my notes i have added five points in my notes as a fresher what do you think the question will be on which ministry will be like mm-hmm. then is ahad uh, allocated budget under gender budget allocated mm-hmm. you cannot keep it in the central sector scheme or a mm-hmm. central scheme. sponsored scheme mm-hmm. anything else okay so like this 100 topics will be there every other day government has announced 1000 things do you think humanly possible you will remember all the ministries or the funding mechanism right or you know or the trivialities see these are events these are one of things right human human trafficking so as i told you 40 to 45 questions in upsc will be in abcd in nature forward question recently project ahad was in the news or operation smile was in the news related to operation smile yes our pencil portal was in the news related to so that a b c d kind of questions are higher in such kind of things because there are thousands of such things okay if upsc will ask you ministry funding mechanism and all those things it will be probably a center sector scheme or a central sponsored scheme pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana okay if you take pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana there are higher chances that i will ask a b c d sorry 1 uh, 2 1 2 3 only 1 and 3 only such kind of questions okay but when you see such event based questions probability is it will be straight forward question do you know or you don't okay so there is no point in remembering all the trivialities in such places so that that thought process is important for you please understand that okay See, what is there it's a human trafficking scheme it is implemented by railways it is not the first scheme we have earlier also discussed it during facial recognition yes or no facial recognition is used for identifying human trafficking cases i have discussed the same okay now let's see cpc china pakistan economic corridor any prelims questions will come see again uh, you can use this in what main answer writing what are the steps taken by government for social justice or helping the vulnerable sections and all those things you can write operation ahad helping the human trafficking human trafficking is a huge problem in the country yes a lot of women children are trafficked that is a social evil moral moral problem right so we are trying to solve it through technology by taking the help of railways 
so it can be it is something that you remember organically there is no mugging up needed hmm? now new cpc so china and pakistan have announced new china pakistan economic corridor any prelims questions hmm? on which area of the platform mm -hmm. Can ask about the river segment encounter mm -hmm. or the uh, important Everest <coughs> peaks. Mm -hmm. Does it cross through all these things? Mm -hmm. Or simply, is it does it pass through Karakoram range? Yes. Yes. Sir. Do you remember the four ranges? Yes. Sir. Do you? Karakoram, Pirpanjal. Karakoram, Zaskar, Nada, and then Pirpanjal. Pirpanjal in the same order. From north to south. Arrange those four in the north to south or south to north. Okay. So again, it, it has nothing to do with CPSC, it has more to do with your geography and CRT. You should not worry about the triviality that might come from CPSC. What is the bench? Should I have a parinian influence? Yes. Yes. And it should be something. Affecting that means it should be discussed a lot. Editorials, opinions, it's a huge issue. As of now, no, we have discussed more about Ukraine rather than CPC because CPC is already existing. All they are doing is extending it to special economic zones. Okay, so again, we can ignore it more or less, but it helps us in revising our geography part. Hmm? Now, PM case, it was in the news recently uh, in the last audit report. Uh, audit report came so. The question is, is Comptroller and Auditor General of India uh, auditing the PM case fund? No, no, sir. It's not? No. Okay. Sure. Yes, yes sir. PM relief fund is audited by Comptroller and Auditor General. Yes. yes. PM. PM relief fund. There are two funds. PM relief yes, fund. Okay. Then there is PM cares. PM cares is something that was launched during COVID pandemic. PM relief fund was launched during partition yeah. refugees. Yeah. By Nehru during yeah. partition refugees. So, so it is an old fund. This is a new fund. So which of them is audited by Comptroller and Auditor General of India? Okay. Both, both of them are not audited. Mm -hmm. Which one? Mm -hmm. So it is obviously audited by controller and auditor general. Next, if I give funds to PM cares, uh, if I give fund to PM care under my corporate social responsibility, is it okay? Yes. A yes, sir. It gets ADG tax exemption. ADG is different. Corporate social responsibility is different. ADG is for individuals. Corporate social responsibility is totally different. So what I'm trying to tell you is when you see PM cares fund, okay, you need to remember three or four trivial points, triviality, macro theme is what PM cares is to help people. Mains question is what or where will you use it in a democracy funds are supposed to be transparent and accountable. Every rupee that is coming into a fund and every rupee that is going out of a fund should be accountable and transparent. That is macro theme. But for films, how will you see it? You will see it like this. What are the things that you are going to see? It is entirely voluntary fund for individuals or organizations. And there is no budgetary support for PM cares. That means not a single rupee of Indian budget is coming or flowing into PM cares fund. But every, it is funded through individual organizations. Number two, corporate social responsibilities. That means if you give money to see, uh, you know, PM case, it is considered as CSR for that year fund. Okay, so you don't have to do any other activity for your company. All you have to do is transfer the entire money to PM case, and for year that year your CSR quota is done. Okay, it is not audited by CAG. It also have hundred percent exemption for ATG. So these are the four trivialities that you have to remember. So remembering everything about PM cares is useless. If a question comes, it should come in these lines. What are they? CSR, ATG, voluntary, no budgetary support, and no CAG audit. <clears throat> okay. So UPSC will ask you what is not there. 
or what is they so such trivial minute detail is very very essential for prelims in the exam hall you should not even think as a discussion no cag yes that is the biggest criticism for the entire audit report right if you if you read the audit report article what is it saying it will be audited by some third party private auditor okay not by cag why not cag okay next does cag send any reports to parliament yes sir sent to president uh, sent to president mm -hmm. he will table it in the parliament, parliament. which reports any idea expenditure <coughs> i don't know the public account expenditure which took place hmm. in the year hmm. after the expenditures are incurred hmm. the details are set hmm. okay what is the biggest criticism of cag post mortem it is a post mortem body so is indian cag a auditor general or comptroller and auditor general auditor general it's an auditor general but not comptroller what is the meaning of the word comptroller <laughs> permission granting authority to spend money for it so before spending if you actually take the permission then that is comptroller and auditor general right now you are only okay. auditor general that means if a rupee is to be spent first if you are asking why then it makes more sense <coughs> what is the point and dissecting after uh, you have done the spending okay there is one more body called as controller and auditor general have you heard about him cag is there there is controller and auditor general yes, never heard no. it is there please please at least try to look, go through what he does hmm? next lavanya palte ayinda kale no quality who have completed quality going on kale da mundar ka lag bandam sar adakko mundu chadavale randa ayyo okay santosh quality only 60% governor chapter done okay narayan done so what are the various powers of president and governor in relation to you know uh, the punishments mm -hmm. just tell the technical names pardon uh, mm -hmm. one more is there pardon reprieve respite remission commute and suspend okay so does he share all the same powers with uh, president no sir who have more power president, president. what are the extra powers of president marshal uh, court power oh, okay and death sentences are capital punishment so these two are the extra powers of president president the rest all are common with no. governor sure yes, yes sir. okay so that is just like a basic revision for policy okay <clears throat> now what is parole and for lock and why is it in the news lalu prasad yadav is a parole mm -hmm. so again he sent it to judicial uh, magistrate parole is condition based mm -hmm. and for lock is not based on any condition yes. parlo is not based on any condition more or less yes both of them are only applicable to convicted mm -hmm. criminals unlike bail uh, which is a rule or a right okay parole and parlo has nothing to do with the rights yeah. of the individual it it will be on the mercy of the issuing authority parole is more about conditions as she was mentioning let's say a convict is there his or her parents or someone his close or relatives or someone is dying or something like that a marriage is there so he wants to attend that so he the, the the you know based on his behavior the authorities might give him some permission to go and come that is parole whereas furlough is more about maintaining that you know 
the humanity the, in the sense if someone is in the jail for last 10 years okay he might lose the touch with the reality the outside world right he's he's going to be in the jail for 10 15 years right he is a get for love okay it is just to break the monotonousness of the uh, punishment system in india we have a re restorative justice right not retributive justice system so dera baba is in the news lalu prasad yadav is in the news both the times we have seen the terms parole and for law recently justice chandrachud gave a judgment saying parole is not a right parole or for law are not a right of the convicts it is not your right if you, if you want to apply you can apply it is a discretion whether to give you the permission or not it's definitely not a right, right. Hmm? <clears throat> so in the same way you should have crystal clear clarity about what is remission what is reprieve what is pardoning okay is it a right so on and so forth okay Yeah. Yes. So again, I, I want you to remember all these things. Bail is before, parole and furlough is after. If a question comes A, B, what is what? They might give you a definition and they might ask you this applies to what? Bail, remission, uh, parole, furlough. So you should be able to distinguish between all these things crystal clearly. Next, E rupee, all of you remember? E rupee. What is E rupee? It's a coupon. Mm -hmm. So, is internet needed for E rupee, Santosh? Yes, sir. Internet is needed. Okay. Kirtana? E rupee, never heard. Never, never. Nemo, Chinna Pada Pradna. Rupee, you know? E rupee? Ekkada Taliyat Nada. ఆన్లైన్ బ్యాంకింగ్ సంబంధించి విన్నారు ఫేమస్ ఇట్ డస్ నాట్ రిక్వైర్ ఇంటర్నెట్ ఓకే వై ఇట్ ఈస్ లైక్ కూపన్ ఓకే So if a prelims question comes, uh, on what basis it will come, Pratisha? On E rupee. Mm -hmm. Is it important? Why? Because Pratisha said so. Sir, mm. Then? Uh, regarding, like, I think there were questions regarding BIM also. Very good. NCPI has been repeatedly asked by UPSC, National Payment, Payment Corporation, Corporation of India. <coughs> NPCI is a parent body for UPA platform, right? And it is also a parent body for EUP. Yes. Is it a Indian government body? No, sir. It's a private. Wow. It's not private. <laughs> I mean, it's private as, mm. as, private as I the remember. The government organizations came and made this one. Platforms. All what organizations? SBI. All commercial banks. banks. All commercial Indian banking associations. Mm -hmm. Indian banking association came to create National Payment Corporation of mm -hmm. India. Okay. Uh, is RBI a member? No, sir. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so you understand the basic trivial, right? There are three previous year questions. One is UPI, the other one is NPCI. Now the logical extension is EUP. EUP is last year current affairs also, but this time also it is in the news because government has extended the EUP value to around 1 lakh rupees, I think. Okay. So the trivialities apart, you have to remember what is NPCA, who are the members of NPCA, how do they function? Okay. And what is the speciality or trivialities of EUP? the most important thing in eurobe is it does not require internet connection see again it's a misnormal uh, at the end of the day one part or the other you need internet connection but for it to function it does not need internet 
I will give you a voucher, QR code to Santosh. Okay, he will go to a particular shop. Does Santosh need internet connection? No. The shop wala scanning it. Needs it. Needs it. When he scans it, he will get the amount, and he will give certain amount of goods to Santosh. Say, for example, I have given him a voucher for food. He will go to that food store. He will take it for only food. Okay. So the advantage is it is tagged. That means Santosh is supposed to only get it for food. Food only. He cannot use the same voucher for health. So they will probably use the mechanism to filter. Okay. If I give uh, it for food, people are buying alcohol. I can reduce that triviality. Even private sector companies can give the e rupee. Yes. No. Can private sector issue e rupee? Private companies, sorry, private uh, what? Private organizations. I'm a private organization. As a welfare benefit, I'm giving it to my employee. Is it valid? Is it possible? Yes, it is. Watchers. So if I call it vouchers, people may not understand it. So what I did is e rupee. Actually, CBDC should be e rupee. Yes or no? Central bank digital currency should be e rupee. This should be some voucher based scheme. But people will con confuse. So what I smartly did is call it as e rupee. I'm making people get used to this voucher system. Health, education, private employee giving health benefits. Say for example, you work under me. You have a health issue. I have to give you health benefits. So what will I do? I will ask you what is the bill, insurance, including everything, sir, 42,000 rupees. So I have given a voucher to say, for example, XYZ, 42,000 rupees. And she can use, he or she can use it only in that particular, any hospital for 42,000 rupees only, for medical purposes only. It does not work elsewhere. Right? So automatically I will come to know, right, where you have used that voucher. So it is a valid, it is basic understanding. Okay? So ERP reduces that friction. And it is also to address the infrastructural gap. Not everybody has smartphones. It's, it's, no, it's like a preloaded QR code. Okay, one time use. So that these are the major things that you need to remember for e rupee. Hmm? Again, as I said, this can be thrown into long term economy evergreen topic. Long term. How do we make India a less cash economy? E rupee can be promoted, but I think you e rupee in the long run will fail spectacularly. Why? So they can misuse it. Not misuse people have to use it again. People have to get used to this smartphone things or have to make the infrastructure very affordable. Uh, again, adaptation might be a problem. See, I might lose a user. It is fixed to your name, nobody else can use it. Okay, if you remember our discussion, I told you, right? I will go to the shop. You will ask my Aadhaar card. The name on the e-voucher and Aadhaar card should match. Only then the e-rupee will, will be scanned. So I can reduce a lot of corruption by all these things. But again, the voucher system and all these things. I haven't seen the adaptation very quickly. If it is adapted by people, it would have been a super success by now. So, of this, people will start having smartphones only in the long run. Again, to make it affordable, to make it cheaper. See. Uh, even uh, people with Nokia phones, Africa, Africa people have adapted e rupee fantastically. Yes, USSD, USSD codes. If you, if you remember the normal Nokia phones, I can send an SMS and the money will be transferred. Star hash, 06 hash, you get the IMEA code, something like that, right? So all these are USSD codes. Your SMS charging, send one to, to get a balance, send two to get the balance. Even that can. So your other link to bank account link to your phone number, you can use the USSD to transfer the money. So you know, because in 2016, when UPI came, uh, I clearly understood that UPI is going to be super duper success. In 2016, when people were not even aware of, you know, UPI, the adaptation was very bad, high failure rate. Nine out of the 10 times, people failed to deliver the money. It was risky, not secured, the apps were insecure, a lot of problems were there. But still then I understood how the logic works and I thought like this will be a grand success one day given that people and it was success, it, it was a success why people adapted just like me everybody who is in the field understood how smart how things are going to change uh, phone pay came into the market 
uh, i clearly remember one of my friend saying this when google pay was introduced in india he sent a message don't use google pay yeah, rupee you know what is a phone pay is indian company don't encourage google pay that very day i told him just see in the long run google pay will be like oh, super duper success no matter how hard you try google pay will be more adapted and because of google pay upi is a super success okay why pre installed every android phone will have google pay so i have reduced all that is a fiction i don't have to install beam phone pay or any app already google pay is there not only that he is giving funds Yes or no? He's giving token money. Rupee to rupees. No, no, not even that. I mean, saturation has already reached. So that kind of momentum I haven't seen in Europe. Maybe I'm wrong. At the grassroots level, it is working. I don't know, but I haven't seen a lot of success. Okay. Uh, phone pay, uh, QR code, right? <laughs> Digital beggar. <laughs> you know that is both uh, something to be, uh, you know, be, uh, laugh at and the same time to be uh, be sad at. If if a beggar can, uh, you know, identify himself using a QR code, okay? Why not identify all such fellows and push them to? Not only employment, old age homes, shelter homes. The state has to take care of them. We can take care of them, right? Yes. We can throw them into ashrams. Okay. Like, according to Bombay Bakers Act, if I I'll ask them is better. <laughs> then even right. <laughs> so I told you right. Uh, there was a old age home where farmer chief justice of India went. Did I tell you that story? It's a, it's a cut wrenching story. I I can't forget it. Forty two people were in that old age home. I don't remember. It's a shelter home or a mental health uh, institute. Okay, forty-two people are there, and there was a single toothbrush. That 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 is a you know uh, condition that that in inhumanness of the people. Just imagine, right? So when we see people on the roadside, the destitute and all these things. Okay, there are people who are thrown out by their own families. There are mental health issues. Yeah. Even I went to an orphanage where the girl was thrown out after the death of her family, like father and mother. Huh. Her relatives must father, have thrown her out. Huh. In the yes. orphanage. Exactly. And I we, see we we have last touch with uh, uh, last touch with apathy, right? In the COVID pandemic, what happened to all such people? We hardly don't know. We literally don't know, right? I mean, no. What happened to the orphans in COVID pandemic? No one knows. We don't know the abuses that they must have gone through. A lot of things are there. Uh, so all these are. We have last touch with apathy. Again, there is no point in discussing that in depth. But the only solution is, <clears throat> now people don't beg by choice. Is that no? Nobody actually yes. begs by choice. If we show them some care, concern, and all those things, most of them can be rehabilitated into something or the other. That is why I say SOS is a very good uh, concept. SOS village system. Where uh, the elders who are thrown out of the homes are linked with orphans. Uh -huh. Both of them will have a kind of family, right? Orphans will have someone to guide to, and senior citizens will have someone to take care of. So S Y S villages are created. Even outside the Hyderabad, you have S Y S village where <laughs> all those senior citizens who are, I mean, destitute and all these things, they will be brought in. Senior citizens. At the same time, orphans will also be in the same village. So these people have experience. These people don't have anyone to talk to. So when they both mingle, at least some kind of guidance will be there. So it creates a bonding. It creates an ecosystem, right? So S Y S is a nice concept. <clears throat> okay. Now, Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana. 
You must have heard about it hundreds of times. Fasal Bhima Yojana. What does it do? Insurance. Insurance scheme to farmers, crops. Okay. Okay. In post harvest cover. Mm. So, what crops is it? Interest rate. Interest rate. Premium rate. Ah, premium rate. Premium rate to different different crops is different. Yes. So, does anyone remember? Yes, so for rabi crops it was less. Mm. For curry crops it was high. Mm. Numbers, please. Mm. Numbers are something. Karif crops 5, Rabi crops 3. So your logic is correct. Will you put it correct? No. Karif more, Rabi less. You remember to say. I gave 5 and 3. 5 is more, 3 is less. Logic suits. Ah, okay. The option was like all crops. All crops. Okay. Hmm. All crops. Definitely wrong. All is not correct. So when you read Tradhan Mandri Fasal Bhima Yojana, the first thing you need to remember is the premiums for different different crops is different. For curry, if it's two, Rabi 1.5, horticulture is 5%. So the premiums that you have to pay on the basis of the crop is that much amount. Okay. And central government will pay the rest of the money. So so that is a very important thing the government is doing. It is creating an ecosystem where it is promoting the culture of insurance. Not all crops in India are covered under insurance. So what is the government doing? Promoting the culture of insurance. People will realize one day, because my crop was insured, something happened, but I still got the entire money. So it will save the farmers from suicides. It will break them from the clutches of middlemen. It will promote financial inclusion. It will also give proper idea for the government for compensations, right? Insurance law of credit. Hi. Basically, the circle will be going on. The cycle won't be broken down. If insurance money is not received by the farmer, what will happen? He will go into debt from there to suicides. Okay. So such kind of thought process is important for understanding Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. Next is... Risks covered under the scheme. What are covered? What are not covered? Okay. So the first point is, if I give you storms, cyclones, drought, okay, or diseases, and then if I give you yield, one, two, three, four, five sounds logical. Crop yields, crop yield means the amount of food grains I'm Rationality or normal thinking says it should not be under Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. But actually that is the first point. Yield losses are the first thing that are covered under Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. Okay. The next is your natural fire, lightning. We know again the fire is natural. It should not be artificial. It should not be man-made. Somebody burned down your crop. Sorry. Not covered under Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bhima Yojana. Okay. Next, flood, inundation, and landslides. They are also covered. Last one is pests and diseases. Right? Locust attack. Locust attack. You remember locust attack, right? Yes, so that sir. can be technically pests. Hmm? <coughs> Next. <coughs> What are not covered? When are it, when it is not covered? War, nuclear risk, riot, grazed or destroyed by wild animals. So elephant attack. It's a common thing, right? In some parts. Wildlife protection. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> 
okay so you have to just remember this see these are things one time if you read it will stuck in your brain you might find it very trivial but what if you see that hatke point that unique point like okay, this is not covered it's not that easy to forget at least your brain will remind you it's not correct clear yes so again the focus is you don't do this kind of triviality to thousands of schemes there are around 300 to 400 government schemes you should not do this kind of depth to all the topics there are only 100 or 150 topics where this kind of depth is good the rest all project ahat human trafficking done one line single line project ahat human trafficking atam pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana you go in depth i will also answer Yes or no? There you remember ministry, department, all the trivialities. Totally worth your time. Why? Probability is very high. A question might come. Narega, yes. National Green Tribunal, yes. As much triviality as possible, yes. Pradhan Mantri Fasal Bima Yojana. Aishman Bharat, yes. Yes or no? Electoral bonds, yes. Worth your time. You remember the triviality in the uh, electoral bond scheme? Yes. What is Unique triviality among the trivialities. What is unique triviality? It's about amount. Mm -hmm. It's about limit of amount. One it's crore, right? One, it's a thousand multiple sums. Multiple sums, thousand to hundred to one crore, or thousand to one crore, thousand to one. Of all the trivialities, one triviality is very important. But the name is the name of the. It is related to something we have discussed today. it's not covered under rajya so is pm cares fund cat can't audit it okay anonymity everybody knows right it provides anonymity if the if the electoral bond is not ready in 15 days it is donated to pm cares fund if electoral bond is purchased and not redeemed in 15 days it is given to pm cares fund pm cares is something we have discussed today that is how you interlink you understand triviality of all the trivialities if i purchase a electoral bond you don't know that was it my recently said because electoral bonds came earlier and then <coughs> came pm cares huh? pm cares fund or pm relief fund i think pm relief fund some pm fund it will be donated to pm relief fund sorry not pm cares it will be donated to pm relief fund okay so you understand right of all the trivialities within the electoral bond scheme you have to look at that particular thing because anonymous everybody knows kyc is kyc compulsory for electoral bonds yes can umang walk into a sba branch in delhi a uh, dedicated branch give cash and purchase electric <coughs> electronic bonds sorry uh, election bonds can umang do that she cannot because either it should be in dd format or in check format no cash no cash purchase of electoral bonds <coughs> so such kind of trivial trivial detail has to be remembered so from now on, again as i told you if you have fixed material tear that electoral bond keep it at one place pm fasal bima yojana put it at one place like this 150 topics will be there read them again and again and again you don't have to go by months wise years wise sir i am reading from january you are reading from january but you don't know anything in national food security act zero points point if a question comes you won't forget okay i will tell you the trivialities 2016 or 17 prelims there was a question uh, insurance based scheme if the husband is insured okay he passed away will that insurance go to the wife or not what kind of uh, the pension pension if if the husband is under pension okay if he dies will the pension go to the wife that was the triviality that upsc have asked 
okay but the logic is almost all pensions will half like will haul and go into the wife's account <coughs> sorry that's that's universal rule so using general common sense we could have answered that question that means it has nothing to do with the scheme but you understand the triviality right if husband is getting 40000 rupees pension if he passes away the wife will get 20000 rupees that is general universal rule okay so that is why focus on few schemes focus on them perfectly you it will reward you hat k schemes hat k points are rarely asked by upsc people fail because they 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 look at all the shiny things the glittering things so this is scheme that is scheme that material this material and ignore the basics mp lights national food security act right to education act these are the repeated topics again pyqs yes i think it's a pyqs pyqs your question it's a benchmark for your growth yesterday i told you about gihas i hope you have read about gihas no I, that's why i added it to today's video i i have full trust in people hmm. you haven't right hmm. because you are busy being busy i am telling you it, it, there is nothing new for the next 10 batches also it's like you know psycho psychologically same to same nothing will change from Kanyakumari to Kashmir, I have students all over the country. Everybody is same attitude. Yesterday, a student called me and said, Sir, I'm reading ancient history. And the questions are not coming from ancient history. So what should I do? I purchased a new material from a new site. Okay. So I said, you're chasing 700-page book for two questions. And you're ignoring the five questions that is coming from standard textbook. Is it commonsensical? Common sense, you know? chasing two. Uh, not not, uh, not common, common sense, sense. Again, right? For two questions, you are reading a seven hundred. Ego, those two questions. Why won't I get? I will read them. Yes or no? Are UPSC itself is officially saying get fifty questions net correct. You are in the game. That means fifty questions. If you don't know, also it's okay. Net 50 questions, if you, I mean, understand, right? Yes. People are struggling to get 50 questions correct. Where does your ego even come into the picture? The smartest people in India who are already in the service, who gave the exam multiple times, they themselves are struggling to get 55, 110. So that means they are officially saying, sir, I don't know 45 questions. Okay, I'm just guessing them. They are negatives. Still, I'm somehow clearing lucky. They are accepting it. So there is no scope for ego, right? All we have to do is master the existing things perfectly. The next trivialities will become very, very easy. <coughs> Gihas. Saffron heritage. Koraput traditional agriculture. Kutanad. Below sea level. Farming. These three are called as globally important heritage, uh, agricultural heritage systems. See, this is a old current affair. I'm not saying it's something new or unique. But the thing is, it's basic. You are supposed to know it. If I talk about climate smart agriculture, you need to know about Gihas. If I talk about sustainable agriculture, you need to know about Gihas. Important. Hmm? Is Kashmir saffron under GA tag? No, I remember only that Sean's from Kashmir. Oh, uh, How many GA tags are there? Like, number. There are 300 plus. There are 300 plus GA tags in the country. So you humanly cannot remember everything. But at least very, very important ones. You can remember yes ga tags saffron kashmir kashmir saffron is under geographical indication it, it is eligible for ga right even by sheer common sense we can eliminate why are why do we call it as kashmir saffron 
I can go saffron in Hyderabad in my basement also. Yes or no? But it is Kashmir saffron. There is some uniqueness because of the geography. Okay. Then Kashmir redness point has a red color. I am not so sure, but yes, it has a unique feature that it gives a red color. Red color. It adds more color to the dish. Yes. Probably they have applied it. I am not sure. They might get GI tag. Sir, if something is older and up there and you must move it, how will we move it? Static book. In a static book, the older and up there will not be there. It is there. Bring Shankar, I will show you. That is what I am saying, right? See, they, they, they are not mad to call it as first edition, second edition, third edition, right? When they say it's third edition, that means they have added something new. Okay. And what is so special about uh, Gihas? This particular line. Gihas is a living, evolving system of human communities in an intricate relationship with their territory, cultural or agricultural landscape or biophysical and wider social environment. They are not changing the ecosystem. They are adapting to the ecosystem. System. And it's a living, organic, evolving system. Nobody is suffering. Okay. So if you remember your environment classes or environment textbooks, there is a chart, six types of relationships, symbiotic, parasitic. Yes. Yes. So symbiotic. So mostly Gihas relations are symbiotic relationships. I hope it's win win scenario for both. It is good for the fish, it is good for the farmer. Both of them are living together, benefiting. Okay. So, a crane on a buffalo. Crane on a buffalo. What kind of relationship is there? Uh, there is no effect on the cow and mm -hmm. the buffalo, mm -hmm. but the crane is happy eating the no. bugs. Okay. One positive, one negative. Okay. Bat and a buffalo. Bat and a buffalo. Hmm. Vampire bats. Vampire bat. Hmm. If it is drinking the blood, buffalo's blood, uh, that is parasitic, right? Yes, sir. That is why they are called as vampire bats. Okay. So there are six, right? Come and uh, <coughs> symbiotic. Some some ism. Amenism. Okay. Amenalism. Predation. One is parasitism, and predation. They both are same. Same. Then yes. why are there two different things? Uh, one is uh, one is related to bacteria and fungi. Mm. That is that is found where it's in static textbook. So you need to master it. That is what I told you, right? If tomorrow UPSC asks a simple question like what kind of relationship is this? We need to know if somebody is affected and uh, you are benefiting, then that is parasitic yeah. behavior. If someone is not having any effect, the buffalo is having zero impact if a crane is sitting on it, but the crane is happy to sit on the buffalo to eat all the bugs. So who is benefited? The crane. Technically speaking, the crane. Buffalo, again, it will go into the mud, everything will be solved. It does not need the <laughs> crane's help. Yes or no? Going by the same logic, I hope you haven't seen the global warming potential also. You have seen same book. Why not turn few pages more than? Where is chaos in Samudra? No, it is available. <coughs> I think it must it's be. an agriculture topic. Probably. It's, hmm, or it, it must be in the list. We'll see. I will show you. Okay. Yeah. Global warming potential, you must have read. Yes. yes? Hmm. See, this global warming potential is not fixed. It keeps on evolving. Uh, this is most of the data you see in the materials is 2001 IPCC report data. So even IPCC keeps on updating the global warming potential. But summary is more or less the same things. 
what is the average lifetime of a carbon dioxide molecule that you release? 50 to 200 years. What is the damage? One. Methane, short lifespan comparatively, <coughs> but it damages more. Nitrous oxide, both high. It lives for a long time, its damage is also very high. Okay. So, like this, you have to remember the basic things. This is also static, not actually current affairs. This you should remember perfectly. Clear? Yeah? So, I hope you understood how or what kind of triviality you should focus. Not everything given in the material is equally important. We put there because we have to cover the macro theme to make some sense. But within that, you need to pick up the specific parts. Only when you pick up those trivialities, highlight at K points, you will remember them for long term. Okay. I hope you got some perspective. We'll remember how to read things from now on. Not every line is important. If you see project something, something, what is it? Katam done. <laughs> Revise. Multiple times you heard. That is why if you write down all the one-liners you write down in a book. One-liners you have to write in a book. This you have to revise material again and again. Okay, got the difference? Yes. So when you solve the mocks, also current affairs test series, there also we will find the similar questions covering the most important areas. But why that question was asked? Right. Forest right tax, right? Yes, uh, why was that question asked? Because Supreme Court judgment <coughs> came. So last year, at least for six months, forest right tax was in the news. So it, it, it soaked in the news like anything. It was continuously in the news. People knew that question. Back. Triviality. Forest Rights Act is an evergreen topic. We have to remember it both for films, length, and interview purpose. Not only that, last year it was in the news for six months. Six months is a huge time in UPSC. People forgot. That is why they are. In the starting, everybody will read, right? For six months, who will remember the topic? So that is the, that is where the problem came. Okay. Got the idea? Sometimes we get confused. Uh, it, it may not be tribal ministry, it may be revenue ministry. No, sorry. It may be some other ministry. For example, white collar crimes. Of money laundering act. So under which ministry? Prevention of Money Laundering Act comes Home under the ministry. ministry. Home Ministry. Why? All security related things are done by Ministry of Home, Home Affairs. Affairs. But Prevention of Money Laundering comes under Ministry of Finance. Going by our common sense, we might, you know, Telugu idiom, Kapula Kalestam. Yes or no? All security related issues are taken care by Ministry of Home Affairs. But Prevention of Money Laundering actually comes under Ministry of Finance. Simple. So why did they ask that question? Because we have too much trust in our common sense. And as Daniel Kahneman says in thinking fast and slow, common our sense common sense is worst. We should never believe it. Okay. But UPSC tests are common sense. Exactly. <laughs> if UPSC asked your question, if, if UPSC asked that question, there must be some logic behind it. If it was that obvious, Ministry of Tribal, uh, Tribal Forest Rights Act comes under Ministry of Tribal Welfare, either you will do two things. Either you, will, you overthink. Yes or no? In the exam yes, hall, don't you overthink? No, okay. Are, if, if, if such a silly question UPSC is asking, why will it ask? You will overthink and you will get it wrong. Yes, Attempted thinking that something, something some gafla is there, but that gafla may or may not be <coughs> there. So everything is mind game in UPSC. Uh, it's Cadbury said, right? Laddu Gavala. So, <laughs> Laddu ga. so if UPS is giving me four marks, you know, I, I, that that the you know, beware of the Greeks that comes with gifts. You must have heard that idiom, right? Beware of the Greeks who comes with gifts. The Trojan story example. In the same way, if the first two questions in UPSC prelims are like take free questions, two marks, two marks, then I will actually suspect something is wrong. 
yes or no it might drive me into over confidence then starts the real drama gone case yes so i hope you will remember all these things upsc simple mind game exam we have to be ready on day 1 <coughs> okay yes we'll continue the discussion tomorrow yes i hope you are reading nicely